In this tutorial, we're going to look at um, an energy transfer molecule which occurs with inside living cells. And it allows a uh, very short total storage of energy and it allows energy to be uh, transformed from one part of the cell to the other. Okay, so there are two molecules in here which can transform from one to another. The first is called ATP for short, and that stands for. Um, Adenosine triphosphate, A D E N O S I N E uh, triphosphate. Okay, and that uh, looks like a base um, and a sugar, um, and that is the adenosine part. Um, and then the triphosphate is simply three organic phosphate molecules. Coming off the side there. This is a uh, simplified version of the molecule, and that's all you really need to know at this level. So we've got a base and a sugar, which constitutes the adenosine, and the triphosphate are three phosphate molecules. Now, the other molecule that this molecule transforms into, and vice versa, is ADP, which um, again is adenosine. So. But this time it's diphosphate. Okay, and again the adenosine is exactly the same as as um, triphosphate. And then we've got the sugar again. And this time we've only got two phosphate molecules, or two organic phosphate molecules. Okay, and then on top of that we will have um, an inorganic phosphate, which is noted by Pi plus a large amount of energy or relatively large amount of energy. Okay, and those are the two molecules. Now, that is the breakdown process. So we'll release the energy and an inorganic phosphate molecule, but also energy processes within the cells. Um, such as uh, the oxidization of uh, fuel molecules during respiration um, or the absorption of photons during photosynthesis will input energy and uh, that input of energy um, will transform ADB, ADP into uh, ATP again. Now this is a very short-lived um, molecular cycle. Um, Typically, it, can only it will only last up to a minute, this molecule, before breaking down or transforming uh, from ATP to ADP or from ADP to ADP. And there's a simple way of uh, thinking about this. Um, if we've got, for example, um, ATP and ADP plus PI, Let's just do a little flow diagram just to make it nice and clear what's going on here. Okay, now, these two transform into each other. Um, so, from ATP will go to ADP plus PI, and ADP plus PI will go to ATP, like that. But also, um, to make these this transform possible, we have got. Um, other processes, and these can be, as I say, during photosynthesis or respiration. These can occur, um, an energy um, re requiring process will um, transform from ATP plus PI. So that it would be an energy requiring process. So no, this would be an energy releasing process okay um, so it requires energy to transform from ATP plus ADP plus PI to ATP and then here we'll have an energy um, requiring process okay because um, 
ATP releases energy and it turns water into ATP plus PI. And remember, this, this is occurring all the time. There's never a build-up of either of these in the molecule. It's always a balance. Um, so, as I say, they only last typically for no more than a minute within the cell before breaking down or going back to ATP. As I say, an energy requiring process will cause ATP, ADP plus PI to transform into ATP. So an energy releasing process will do that, and energy requiring process will transfer ATP into ADP plus PI. If you found this tutorial useful, don't forget to hit the like button below, and if you've got any questions, post them in the comments section down below. And um, of course, check out my other videos for more tutorials on chemistry uh, and physics and science.